You're watching Weekend at Gabe's and I'm Weekend Gabe. This latest episode was brought to you by the good folks over at the Ghetto Flower. Use our code WATG for an exclusive 15% discount when visiting their site. Tell them I sent you. Now enjoy the show. Uh, all right. Well, our next guest is one of the up upstart uh, stars of Chicago. She has the new single out there, Take You There. Like we mentioned at the beginning of the show, she's on a tour with uh, No Name, and she's going to be uh, touring this fall with Dreamer Isioma. And uh, they have a scheduled date here in Chicago in October at the House of Blues. It is a pleasure to introduce Brooklyn Sky to Weekend at Games. Good evening. <laughs> I wasn't sure if my camera was working because it's like black right here, but we chilling. We cool. Yeah, we good. We good. We got you loud and clear. (laughs) How y'all doing? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, We're so glad to have you on. It's a huge pleasure of ours. Uh, Sam put me on to you, and I've been absolutely enthralled with the new single, Take take You There. Uh, I think it's fantastic. Uh, I'm just going to give you a little bit of feedback, so just take a second uh, to me. (laughs) Uh, it has a lot of nostalgic 90s R&B vibe to me. I'm thinking of Groove Theory. I'm thinking of Emile LaRue. I'm thinking about Sweetback. I'm thinking about all these super jazz, uh, uh, these bands and these groups from the early 90s where it were just all about smooth soul and great lyrics and the great vocal tones. Uh, so take mm-hmm. me into what the creation of this record is because I, I think you had to have channel that because the video definitely matches that vibe too. For sure. First, am I frozen right now? No, you nope. good. Okay, I'm chilling. Okay, I guess it's just my end. But um, wow. Um, so with this track, I was in LA. It was like five a.m. I got up. I was staying with my friend Amaria, and I was with uh, one of my really good friends, Brandon, another producer at the time. This is like how many months ago? Like four months ish, five months ago or something. And um, yeah, I like made the beat. I was like, damn, this shit cold. You know, it's just like real, like, like soul and R&B, you know, and that's like the main thing that I strive for. Um, and then like, yeah, I just like, I just started writing down random shit and it, I, I wrote it and produced it in like the, a matter of like three hours. And then I recorded a demo later that night. And yeah, that's basically how it all kind of played. It was very quick, you know, cause before that, I had a lot of trouble trying to find who I was artistically and like as a solo artist. And I was about to give up. I was like, yeah, this, this shit ain't for me, you know? Damn, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then this random day, this random morning at 5 a.m., I was like, damn, like this, I actually feel like this is for me, you know? And it felt very good, you know, because I I thoroughly felt it, you know, and it made me feel good. So, yeah. Hell yeah, and and I was that was a question that I had as well because obviously uh, you know you you play in these ensemble bands uh, from Sisters of the Nitty Gritty to uh, you know playing with Dreamer and the Celestials. Are would you be considered a Celestial yourself? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Sure. Well, you guys are fantastic. <laughs> I saw you guys tear down House of Blues, uh, or sorry, House sure. of Bands. Uh, it was cool. spectacular. Um, you. But you you have this place on music stages sort of regardless of what you do personally, but it was a choice that you made um, to go about it. Do you, do you, have you revitalized that hope in yourself? Do you see a, a, a future solo uh, career for yourself? 100%, 100%, especially when I start doing live shows, I think it's gonna be like, I already have a vision for it. And like this first single and the visual for the single really open my eyes to like damn like the whole horizon you know what i'm saying of what my career can be and yeah like i think one of my not struggles per se but things i've been sitting with have been like i love playing for other people and i love working with all these different artists and everything but like i've been doing that for like five years now professionally right so it's like damn like i kind of want to do my own stuff now you know it's 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 about time to like leave my own band and and everything so yeah um but before we move on to like some of the the solo work and your a lot of your ambitions right now the the video itself is co-directed by dreamer talk about what that relationship and that working relationship is for you and both of you i mean honestly 
I have to first give thanks, a very, very special thanks to Jared. Jared was like the main like director of everything and like edited everything and um and filmed everything and Dreamer was also directing and like creative um directing and everything. And yeah, like Jared is fucking awesome. Like I love Jared. Jared does a lot of Dreamer's um videos, you know, so we were like close like before my project, but I was like, yeah, I have to work with this person. And then Dreamer came along and, you know, like tied everything together. And so I, I would say like all three of us working together, like I said what I wanted and I said, and I gave like inspiration and they just like made, I didn't have to do that much work. You know, I just had to show up and I would say like a couple things like, oh, okay, I want this, this shot right here and boom, boom, boom. But like, other than that, it was hands off. It was like, cool. Cause like they just read my mind with everything, which I really appreciate. You know, I don't got to micromanage. Because <laughs> right. I am a perfectionist, especially, like, with a specific feel I want for my visuals, you know. So, yeah. You, you said in an Instagram post, I didn't stand on this roof for nothing. Please go listen to <laughs> I didn't. You know, it was dangerous. That was dangerous. But, you know, it's, it's about, you know, method acting. You know, it's, that's a big thing. Is that method a fear acting. for you? Is there fear, fear of heights? Not for real. I mean, I was up there, so not for real. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, it was definitely very interesting. I'm like, damn, I was cold as hell. But nah, like I got the response that I wanted, so it was it was worth being on a roof. So hell walking yeah. on a roof, but yeah, for sure, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, we we talked about it. Um, you know, some of the ensembles that you play with. Um, and obviously dreamers is involved with the video. Um, is there, but you know, I, I think of these people that you're playing with, uh, specifically dreamer and, and no name, not only incredible artists in their own right, but also, you know, sort of the cutting edge thought leaders and, and educators of our time. Um, mm -hmm. are, are, have you had times to, to pick certain lessons from them or are you, you still kind of in the process of learning, um, and getting out on, on tour with them. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure how many times y'all have uh, got together at this point. Yeah. Um, well, I would say Dreamer and the band and everything, we're very, very, very close. Like we're all like very, very good friends. Like we hang out like besides the music and everything, like we're all very good friends. And yeah, I mean, I've just like learned a lot about commitment and like friendship in general with the whole band and Dreamer and everything. And that's been, been awesome. Um, with no name, <laughs> that that shit came out the blue, and I'm very, <laughs> like I can't I could I still can't really fathom. And we played already like two shows, right? But it came out the blue, and like I grew up on no names music, you mm. know. And like when did when did the telephone come out? Like 2016. And when oh that God. when that yeah when that tape came out, I would like be playing like guitar and bass to it horribly like trash but i would just like, no you know i want to learn music like it feels so good to like it's like a 360 moment of just like damn like it's crazy you know so i'm like very blessed i mean i love the band you know i played with some of them before and yeah it's like it's very close-knit you know and i'm very comfortable and like the music feels so damn good and i've and i have learned I learn a lot from each experience, but like this one is just like very, like I'm very blessed, you know. Oh, yeah. I was gonna save this. Uh, hold on, Gabe. Sorry, I yeah. was gonna save this question for the end, but I feel like it's 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 good now. We like to ask a few fun questions, but I can't help but notice that tattoo also says 360 uh, oh, on your you on your hand. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, what does that What does that mean to you? Because it, it seems like uh, something you posted about is also in your Instagram bio. Uh, yeah. what, is that the whole thing, full circle? It is. I mean, it's not only full circle, but it's clarity and it's being whole to myself, I, I'd say. Like, even though I'm still evolving, everything is still about ev evolution. But even though I'm still growing, I'm still whole, you know, and I'm still securing myself. You know, um, I'm still a cypher, you know. I got this because of Erica Badu, not because of her, but like just, I was at a concert and then she was like explaining her song on and on. I was like, damn, that's some real shit. So like, yeah, I, I got the tattoo and like, 
this like really relates to me like heavily like every single day just like being and of course i get insecure sometimes but like still i am whole and still i am enough for myself you know that's how i look at it Mm -hmm. all right Uh, we we like to say this phrase of let's turn the hands of time back to when this began for you uh we know that you grew up on chicago's west side uh, if, if our research is correct, you went to the Chicago mm-hmm. Arts High School and uh, in the park. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, we all be in personal space. That's what we do on this show. Where did y'all find that? Yeah. <laughs> Not only did we find that, but we found the original Brooklyn Scott's Brook song on the uh, Shy Arts website. Uh, oh, just, hell no. <laughs> just still out there with a picture of you and your classmates. Uh, just so you know, as we mentioned in news, that digital footprint is written in stone. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, that, really, that is crazy. Whoa. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That, that's all factual. Um, Damn. Woo. Well, well, <laughs> so my, 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 my question is, I, I know uh, from other parents who have children in Chicago arts, the, the rigorous um classes that are that the students have to take where they focus on the whatever it is their focus is in music drama theater whatever it is talk about what that what that was for that four years and take us into you developing your skill set uh playing bass or guitar or or, or or sampling other instruments what was that like for you or and how did that also help you grow into being prepared to be a professional musician I mean, hell. Um, so I went to Shards to study classical guitar. And that's what I did for the whole four years. But um, my sophomore year, I wanted to be a guitarist in the, in the um, jazz ensemble, in, in the jazz combo. But the basis wasn't there. So <laughs> Mr. Bruno, shout out to Anthony, Anthony Bruno. Um, Bruno was like, um, jump on bass. I just want to hear some. And I did. And I couldn't play shit for real, but like, you know, I just little do 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 and he's like, okay, that's cool. And it wasn't my main thing at all. And then jump to now, like it's my main thing basically. So yeah, I was in the jazz ensemble until junior year. And then let's see what else. Yeah, with the jazz combo, we traveled. We uh we did this mini tour in LA. Um, we went to what is it called? The Gen Conference or something in Dallas. We and like Bruno like had us like just be so free with our music making. And that helped me so much. Because I feel like if I had this like straightforward, like blunt jazz teacher, I would not be as whatever I am today. You know, it mm. would not you know what I'm saying? Like he literally had us doing anything that we felt. It was still like rules and play and like, okay, well, instead of this you should do that but like it was very it was very fun you know and it was like a little close-knit family so yeah i think that would be my experience <laughs> at shy arts like that's like the very knocked out oh lord <laughs> but, yeah. um musically yeah there we go that was that was it yeah so so then how did you make the transition from you know sort of just getting started on the bass to, I've seen you play upright bass. You, mm-hmm. you. Uh, I mean, obviously you're playing at the, the cream of the crop as far as bands go, especially around this city. Um, mm-hmm. How how do you reflect on where, where that started and where you are now? Damn. Uh, honestly, <laughs> I definitely practice my ass off. I definitely stayed to myself a lot musically. Uh, that's a good question. Hmm. I mean, I think a big thing is minding my own damn business because, like this, this Chicago Chicago can be very clicky and very messy. So I literally just mind my own business and practice and do whatever I know I need to do to get the opportunities that I want. You know what I'm saying? I know where to show my face and where not to show my face. I don't need to be at every single event. I don't need to be that accessible to everybody. I think that's very important. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think that's I think that's the bulk of it. And like, manifestation is so big to me. Also, it's like very huge to me. 
you know, and again, security in yourself. Cause like I've had so many people just like knock me the fuck down to like try to, especially being like a black woman. I don't want to like even like spill that, like, you know, but like it is some real shit. Like being a black yeah. woman out here as a musician, like nothing else, like not for real singer or not, you know what I'm saying, until now. Like being a musician and being a bassist at that. Like I've always had the experience of if I walk somewhere with my bass case and it could be another a guy that's like six foot one and walking with the same bass case and they'll show him way more respect. And he could have started playing a week ago, you know, so mm. and five or however many years, you know what I'm saying? So like that sometimes like gets me down, but like it's really like security and just like, you know. I could play my ass off somehow, <laughs> you know? <laughs> that you can, yeah. that you definitely can, for sure. Yeah. There's no there's no doubt about that. Uh, I, I wanted to bring up, you just mentioned about you, you know, you started using your voice. I mean, you've done it before in some of your Bandcamp releases about six years ago. Oh my <laughs> God, no. <laughs> <laughs> and trust me, we would have found up the all the old tweets if that Twitter account was still active, but alas, yeah. <laughs> some things disappear. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I was, I, I feel like we're doing like this is your life. <laughs> it's like everything you wish you would have forgot. Guess what? We got it. Um, wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, I, I, I bring it up not to as an embarrassing uh, part of your career, but as a point of you. What is uh, the question? Is more what is your confidence level in your ability to sing, and is that why we haven't seen you? use your vocals as much as we hear you playing instruments or the bass? I think mainly with like singing, has singing, singing has, all, has always been like an iffy thing to me. And I just kind of got comfortable in my voice. Like I could sing, you know, I always knew I could like sing a little tiny bit, you know, like growing up in church and like, you know, I'm a musician. I should be no, you know, know how to do a little bit, but, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I think mainly with my vocals, I couldn't find music that for real fit what I wanted to do with my voice, if that makes sense. So even like production wise, I produced like most of my music and I wasn't so comfortable with how I produced a couple years ago. You know, I was always sad with my production and I would be trying my best to like, you know, yeah. give what I feel in myself out into, you know, whatever I was doing, but it just never worked. So I couldn't sing to it for real. So I think that really goes into play, like making a product and singing over it, you know? But yeah, yeah, I think I think that's the answer for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and diving a little deeper to that aspect, as far as take you there, were there, how many beats did you not use before you landed on that one that you felt was perfect in five hours or whatever, <laughs> whatever it was? Shit. A hunch. I don't know. That's a, uh, because you know what? Yeah, I'll say uh, that's a lot. I don't know. It's probably like a hundred or something. I don't know. That's a lot. Cause I like it was a moment in time where I was doing it every day, trying to make a production every single day. You know, so I have a lot of beats from then, and then like, and then I've like also like I've written songs and everything, but it just wouldn't like. You know, and like Take You There was actually the first song that I ever went into a studio. No matter how many times I've been to a studio, I've never sat in a booth and sang and do and did anything. Like was that, that weird for you, like sitting in the hot seat yeah, as opposed yeah. to being the one judging it? <laughs> I'm usually the person and I'm real not saying I could be a bitch, but like <laughs> me as a producer, I'm gonna be looking at you and I'm like, you could do better and da da da, da. and like I could I could vocally tell them what to do and how to do it like oh this has to be have more breath or this tone has to be longer or, or it would sound better if you did xyz but like being that motherfucker on the mic i'm like i can't do it you know what i'm saying i'm like damn <laughs> he's telling me to do x y and z and i'm like shit that's hard you know so i <laughs> so now when I go get back into that pr production mode for other artists, I'm going to be a little bit more sincere and a little bit, you know, softer. Like, I, I, understand, I understand where you're, you know, so. 
a yeah. little bit more sensitive to their experience. Yeah. hundred percent. Cause damn, that was hard. I was striking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to keep the water and the tea on deck. That is the one and two. 100%. Yeah. Um, um, oh, go ahead, Gabe. Uh, I was I was going to ask, uh, you know, we, we've been talking about a lot of the road work that you've been doing uh, with No Name and then also heading out on the, the road for uh, this fall. But you've also been doing shows all of last year and during, during the, you know, the sort of I don't want to say the height of the pandemic, but you've been out there working. But what, what is that? What is that road life like? And how does that uh, affect your creativity? Uh, what What are some positives of you know going from you know city to city, spending a lot of time on the bus? We, we, we all, I've seen enough tour documentaries where you know the the food options aren't always the best, the living <laughs> conditions aren't great. So how do you kind of like keep your spirits going, keep the the positive vibes going, the creativity still flowing? Um, damn, that's a good question. I would say, I oh, no matter where I am, I'm going to listen to music. I'm going to have my headphones in, you know, or I will like cre- creative wise, I will have my demos or like some tracks that I produce that I, like export it before I left and I'll just be listening and like right into it or like making melodies. Like I always try to do that shit, no matter if I'm on a plane, the bus, whatever, or like after sound check, before a sound check, like I always try to do that. Um, also like my bandmates or like, I'm always cool with most of the people that I work with. So it's like, and people be funny as hell. So it's just like, you know, <laughs> making jokes, laughing and like also just like, after show shit be awesome. Before show shit be awesome. Like, yeah, yeah, I would say that for sure. There you go. Yeah. Um. Okay. Before we get you out of here, I got a couple fun questions. Gabe, you, you got at least one one fun yeah. question in there. Yeah. I definitely All right. Do. All right, Ben. So uh, we saw you did some work for Telfair. Uh, I think a little bit of modeling in there as well as as well as the music or just the music. Um, I was I guess you could say a little bit of modeling because the band was visible and the whole band had Telfar attire on. So yeah. I I'll say a little time bit of mine, but I wasn't like walking, but like yeah. <laughs> that, okay. That was Fair a enough. Great the question is uh what sort of company it could be apparel it could be you know uh more like google it could be anything what company would you love to collaborate with in the future fashion wise it could be fashion it could be something else damn i would say i don't know if this is like problematic because i haven't heard any (laughs) but prada okay um, (laughs) i I just want to you can really step in some shit if you're not careful. You know, <laughs> we don't saying. say Gucci anymore. That's not. It's not okay. Hell no, hell no. Um, I would love to work with Telfar again, though. Like they're all awesome. Like Telfar himself is like awesome. They're like all mm. great energy. The designs, everything is just it's just amazing. The stylists are amazing. So I would love to actually work with them again. To be honest. Work. Work. All right, Gabe, yeah. get, get, get your right. <laughs> All right. Uh, on your Instagram, uh, you had a video for Mother's Day where you used the filter on your mom, uh, the sad <laughs> crying filter. Uh, how, how Has she seen it, and was she upset about that? Hell yeah. I mean, okay. So, you know, <laughs> that first, so, like, before I showed her whatever the filter was and i oh oh my god i could not stop laughing i was trying to like you know act like i was doing a regular video but it was so damn hard she was like why are you laughing bro that shit was funny (laughs) and everybody could like say that i play way way too much but it's okay because people still love me but that shit yeah um her reaction yeah she was Definitely, like, you better not post that shit. I post it anyways. <laughs> and she's okay. She is fine. So, but that shit is so, that shit was so damn funny. It made no sense. <laughs> Thank you for that question. That really brightened my day. For real. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, um, but, all right, I got. Or wait, Gabe, you want to do one yeah, more? Let, let, yeah, I'll get it, get it off, and then you can close this out. All right. All right. Uh, we found in our research that there is a, I think, a thirteen-year-old girl who also ha- goes by Brooklyn Sky, uh, and who's <laughs> a bit of a social media influencer. Uh, right. Would you have? Would Would you have to fight her for the blue check mark at some point? You and know, who would win? That's. I mean, that's the real. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not going to fight no 13-year-old. It was a blue check. I'm like, do your shit, girl. Hear you. You know, I mean, if she got two ends or one end? I think she does. I, I got two. Yeah, you got two ends. I think you got her beat on number of ends for sure. Okay, so I think, <laughs> see, it's still a difference. So I'm not even tripping about it. You know, do your shit. I'm like, again, I'm not going to fight no 13-year-old. Here, yo, I'm not gonna fight her mama, her auntie. <laughs> in, in, five, in five years, though, she 18. Then she could catch those hands at that point. Exactly. Or... You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we just gonna chill. I'm gonna just give her the blue check and be like, "Boom, you deserve it." And <laughs> <laughs> kind of last name, so <laughs> that should be fine. Oh yeah. Uh, my last question here. Uh, the song is called "Take You There." Uh, is a question that I I like to ask people. It's a little bit ethereal. Um, mm-hmm. but what does there look like? <laughs> oh, um, there, like take you there. Like, what does that look like? What does it look like? Where are you taking I mean, us? You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's mean, the question. Not, okay. So the thing is, cause like people, people could take it any way that they want to. It means sex, okay? I don't want to take everybody there. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a little bit weird. I don't need to take everybody, you know? Okay, okay. It's just it's just specifically one person. All right, I get it. I get it. I, I mean, I, I get it. But like, not everybody, you know? Some people could experience whatever. But there is like... Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> got it. Give, give, give me that sound effect one more time. <laughs> Like, you know, like, <laughs> like, 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 yeah, 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 for sure. Got it. Oh, man, that's fantastic. All right, All right. Uh, Brooklyn, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, before we get out of here, we didn't even ask, is there an album on the way? Well, what, what's next? Um, single is coming very, very soon with um, visuals. I'm so excited for this next single. I'm so excited. It is not as soon as a week, but it's not as far away as like two months. So okay. it's coming very, very, very soon. Um, album wise, I'm taking my sweet ass time with that. <laughs> I'm sweet ass time with that. I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make sure it's right and everything, but um. In the future, in the near future, it's just going to be continuous singles. So thank y'all so much also. Oh, yeah. No, I appreciate oh, yeah. it. Brooklyn fun, Sky joining us here tonight on Weekend at Games. Take you there's a new single out on all digital streaming platforms. Go run those numbers up and do the right thing. Also because it's a great record as well. Enjoy the rest of your evening. We hope to have you back on it in the future. Yes. Thank you all so much. All right. Brooklyn Sky joining us tonight. On Weekend at Games, listen, that was a great grab, Sam. I, I love speaking with her. I love her energy. I, I love just how incredibly smart <laughs> these records are. You know, it, it, this is funny, and I'll just share this before we move on to the next segment. But it's like um, I, I do these mixes every week, and I'll just, you know, if I see something new, I will at least check it out. And if I like it, I throw it in the mix, right? Um, but as a result, you know, sometimes I'll, you know, post something and tag somebody in it, and I'll just – ghost no response you know like it, that happens to me regularly every week um so when i get somebody like brooklyn who circles back around and is like yo thank you for putting me on your tiny mix that maybe four people listen to <laughs> <laughs> and that meant a lot to me uh and you know obviously chicago stick together so uh yeah we love her it's gonna be an incredible summer incredible fall for her uh just came off the summer smash we didn't even get to talk about that but um you know it's uh it's it's a bright bright future over there and uh yeah i hope we can have her back on because that was fun man yeah so the, the new record is gonna be out soon so i can't wait to hear what uh what the follow-up is gonna sound like because, uh, that, uh, it, listen, might, it so- might sound a little bit like pew. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for watching the latest episode of weekend at games on youtube brought to you by the ghetto flower 
Make sure to also click on the links in the description for more information to our guests and access to exclusive new music from the Ghetto Flower and so much more. Make sure to also like and subscribe to the show and also continue to share support and show love by clicking on any of the links surrounding my head. Thanks for watching.